Well, hello there and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bocor, your host, and thanks for joining me. It's a really cool January day here and we have an impending snowstorm coming, so I'm trying to get this quick update on and review on the uh, 2024 Mercedes-Benz EQE 500 4Matic SUV. So this is the mid-size SUV in the Mercedes-Benz all-electric lineup of the EQ products. I've shown you the EQB, which is the small size. This is the medium size in the EQE and the EQS SUV, which is the large size SUV, the three row. Those are the three that make up the Mercedes-Benz or MB for short, uh, SUV family of all electric vehicles. I want to thank Mercedes-Benz Canada for allowing me the use of this press vehicle for a few days. Been driving it around, so I'm going to give you my thoughts and observations as always on this uh, beautiful, beautiful all electric. Not cheap though. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the episode. Now, as I mentioned, this is the uh, mid-size SUV in the EQ family for MB and it is a very nice comfortable five passenger SUV there is no third row in it and when we look at the design language it carries over from the EQE family right especially the EQE uh, 500 sedan which I reviewed earlier you can check out my uh, YouTube channel for that and of course this is just the SUV version so it's a little bigger same platform same wheelbase a lot of the same specs basically motors power all that stuff just in a little bit bigger frame and uh, of course, for people that want SUVs versus a four-door hatchback or four-door trunk sedan. So from a design, it's got all the, the design language that EQE has from the flush front, uh, all, everything lit at night. Um, again, there's no frunk in this. You actually put your windshield washer fluid from here. So everything aerodynamics, the handles fold in, all that kind of stuff, and back to the rear which again has that same LED treatment of lights all around, the same design language that we're seeing, just in a little bit smaller footprint. And I think this is a really good size. I think if you need a three row or if you haul a lot of stuff, then the EQS SUV is the way to go if you want bigger. But you know, bigger isn't always better. And I find with, uh, with these SUVs nowadays, they just continue to build them big, 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 and not as efficient as they could be. And efficiency is something I'll talk about in this product. Now, again, I am in winter time, it's minus two. There's a bit of a wind going. Our temperatures are dropping today to probably minus 10 by this evening. So I'm trying to get this review in before it gets really cold and our snow comes. But uh, I have driven this in some snow earlier this week with the all-wheel drive it, it handled very well it's got nice Michelin XI snows on it so really good tire setups but from an overall look and design it is all MB it's a beautiful looking vehicle and it just fits right in you know again to their lineup so when we talk about power and uh, the electrification side to this vehicle, as I mentioned, this is an all-wheel drive vehicle. It's got two motors, produces about 402 horsepower or 633 pound-feet of torque in the 500 version of the EQE. There is a 350 version as well, which produces 400, uh, sorry, 288 horsepower um, and uh, in about the same power uh, as well. So you can start at the 350, but they've given me the top of the line here. So it produces about 300 kilowatts watts of output. This is a 90.6 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack. Um, range is about 433 kilometers of EPA certified. That's in the summer with summer tires. And it's interesting that Mercedes is careful to put that on their specs that with summer tires. So they're indicating the best range possible. Now in these colder temps, that's where obviously we see an impact to EVs and I talk about that a lot and we can't hide that fact so there's no use in me trying to sugarcoat what ranges are going to be in the winter. It's not uncommon to see 20-30% range drops and when it gets really cold like minus 20 centigrade, minus 30, minus 40s, you can even get up to 40 or 45% or range drop. So you need to be cognizant of this in your overall range. And of course you get all that back when the weather is nicer in the spring, summer, and fall for the most part. So that's what EPA is rated on. The 350, it's 407 kilometers of EPA rated range. So a little bit less um, with a very similar battery pack and size. So it's just basically power and some appointments that you'll get in the 500 version versus the 350 and the 350 plus. Now because this is a, a five person SUV and SUV is what it is, it does have some utilitarian use for it. Um, let's unlock it here. It's got the power hatch. 
It's got a good size cargo space. I'm going to put the numbers here for what it is with the, the uh, second row seats up and then what it is for the second row seats down. And you can see by those numbers in the, the pictures and the video rolling here that it's got a nice generous amount of cargo space uh, to put stuff in. I actually just did a quick run this morning for some furniture that I was giving to a relative. And you can see by this little quick video that I was able to pack about six kitchen chairs in there uh, with a room to spare. So just a matter of finagling it with uh, the seats folded down. So it's got a deceptively uh, good amount of space, not as much as maybe some of the competitors out there. You'd have to check some of their specs, but it is a good size for hauling stuff. And I do like the fact that it does have this underground cubby here which is a good size, you'll see by here in the B-roll. It's a good size um, cubby hole that you can put stuff in. It's fairly deep. I actually have the battery charger down here, just fits if I slam it in there, the cabling, so uh, in the case that it comes with. So it's a pretty nice feature, you know, a nice, a decent lift for getting stuff in and out. It's got the tonneau cover and it's, it's mechanical to get the seats. There is no power buttons for putting the seats back for. This price point I thought was a little unusual, but hey, in the EQS uh, SUV, you get more power functions. So sometimes more power is not a good thing because more things can go wrong. But anyway, good amount of hatch space, uh, power hatch, of course, nice high, you can adjust the lift and all that kind of stuff. So you've done a good job in the utilitarian side of this. One thing you folks know I like to do is get in the back seat. So there shouldn't be any issues with back seat room. Nice doors that open fairly wide here, easy to get in, bit of a lift here. And I'm in, I have the seat adjusted where I have it. Tons of room, two fists, a fist and a half, a head room. This does have a uh, moon roof or a glass roof. So, um, you know, it gives you a little bit extra height, especially in the middle seat. Nice, comfortable environment, nothing that. So like I said, there is no frunk in here. This is actually sealed. You can't even open it. And that's standard on the Mercedes uh, EQ products is that they just really don't want people mucking around in the front. There's nothing to see. It's it'd be covered up and it's just basically there. If you need to have this service for any reason, then you would, there are ways to open it up. I'm not gonna, uh, you could go on YouTube and find it, but basically they don't want you opening them up. So basically if you need to fill your windshield washer fluid, which is what people are gonna ask, hey, how do I do that? There is this pop out port here, this little window uh, open opening. There's a um, reservoir in here. You just start pouring in here and it will duct it down into the uh, windshield washer fluid and then you just close it up. So it's a manual thing, it's not automatic. That's basically it. So they want you to not worry about maintenance on this, just drive, get in and drive it. And again, not offering any front storage on any other EQ line. With regards to charging, here's the charge port. It will support 9.6 kilowatts for AC level one, level two, and then up to 170 kilowatts for DC fast charge. So it's enough to get you where you need to go in about 35 minutes or so from about 10 to 80 percent. Not too bad. So as you can see by my tour of the inside, like the other EQ models, the EQE SUV's cabin looks open and airy with enough passenger space for adults to sit in both the front and the rear seats comfortably. All models are five seaters on this one. Uh, it's got really great seats, very comfortable seats, many way uh, that you can adjust them. It's got lots of technology with the hyperscreen and the MBUX stuff, very good audio system, uh, nice and easy menu systems that you can make everything on one level and so forth. So that's just a highlight of some of the tech. Um, and there is no, as I mentioned, there's no third row option available for the this size of the um, EQE because it is a mid-size model. So, um, you know, lots of storage space uh, under the, the center console, uh, nice big uh, panoramic roof that does open, I believe, the part there. Um, it's got a shade that goes across to cover everything up. Just a nice place to be. All right, if we look at the rear seat, I already showed you that it's easy to get in and out of this. You've got a little bit of cubby storage on the door pockets, easy to open. Um, you've got some controls on the doors, nice leather seating or leather materials. Here I put the armrest down, showing you the cup holders. It does have a small um, HVAC system for the back seat passengers. They can control their heating and cooling functions, all that kind of stuff with some vents. Again, overall, a really nice environment to spend some time in. 
All right, some quick driving thoughts here in the MB EQE. Uh, you know, I love the MB products, as you guys know. It's luxury, it's quiet, it's comfortable. Again, with that rear steering, it turns on a dime. It's de deceptively uh, quick on turning, so you have to kind of adjust to that, but it's great maneuverability. It's a great cabin, comfortable. The MB MBUX system here is nice. I think it's a bit too much, personally, for me having all these screens, a bit too much, but it is nice. Is it worth a $10,000 upgrade? You would decide that. Passenger has their own stuff. Good amount of storage, easy cup holders. You know, I've been driving this for a week, back and forth to work, doing running around. Very comfortable to get in and out of, all that kind of stuff. So, no complaints there. Um, again, quiet, comfortable driving. The suspension is very nice. As I mentioned, the steering is spot on, easy to maneuver. Brakes are okay. You know, a little bit of mushiness as is typical with EVs, right? Because it's using, in this case, I've been driving normal recuperation for most of it. Been trying to find the best setting for recuperation, but um, I, uh, I haven't really stayed on one too much. I've just kind of left it at the default, which is normal. There is strong recuperation or regeneration. Um, there is no regeneration at all. And then there's the intelligent, which uses the sensors to sense traffic in front of you. And if you're coming up on a vehicle, it will help slow you down. Um, in the intelligent mode, once you stop, you can let your foot off the brake and it will hold you there. So it kind of incorporates a, an auto hold feature into the intelligent recuperation. But I think at the end of the day, I've just kind of left it normal just to see what I can get with, you know, decent HVAC. I'm not freezing in the car. I've been using the seat heaters. The seat here, the uh, steering wheel heater comes on, really makes things nice and warm uh, in the winter time. But it is chewing up the battery. You know, I'm seeing this 31, uh, 30 uh, kilowatt per hour per 100, um, which is not the most efficient. The range I'm going to see on this is probably around the 250 kilometer range for the city. That's from zero to 100, or I charge it to 100%. I'm at 18% showing with 220 kilometers of range driven and showing about 60, uh, 64 to 83 remaining, depending on, on that range. So it's certainly not the most efficient, um, but nor should it be because it's a midsize heavy SUV for carrying stuff and people. So, so in conclusion for driving, I mean, it's a really nice, comfortable, quiet vehicle. There's no issues there. You know, people are going to get into this. They're used to the MB luxury. They're used to the MB quality. It's got everything here that got a beautiful sound system. It's a really pleasant environment to be in and to, to get around. Just be aware of potentially the range in the winter times. In the summer, I uh, wouldn't have any problem getting 350 to 400 kilometers on this in the summer in, in normal driving. But in the winter, it is gonna take you down to that 250 range. If you're going old highway, probably closer to 200. You'd have to check it. Uh, but again, it does support pretty fast charge, easy fast charging, so it will work on a road trip. You just gotta remember that you're gonna stop a little bit more frequently and probably charge a little longer because of the cold temps, and that's natural for all EVs. Just a quick video of the driving the Mercedes-Benz EQE 500 SUV in the snow. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the efficiency isn't the greatest. However, um, as you can see here, it's getting 35 in this drive, but uh, we're going through a lot of uh, country roads here, back roads, and it's been snowing all day. So we have a good amount of snow that's been cleared, but still some slick areas, some snow coming out, and this thing handles like a dream. We went through some roads where it was almost whiteout conditions, blowing across for open fields, lots of snow on it. And again, because of the all-wheel drive, the weight of the battery, um, this has uh, Michelin XI snow and good tires, that whole combination, obviously speed and watching what you're doing help, but uh, this vehicle really handles quite well in the winter. So the Germans do know how to build cars that handle well in the winter. And I uh, just wanted to point that out, that this is just a phenomenal car for winter driving, as long as you use common sense. So I hope you enjoyed all the views, uh, looking at the interior and the driving thoughts about this vehicle. Look, it's a great vehicle. Um, it's not gonna be cheap though. Canadian pricing on the EQE 350 starts at 90, just under $95,000 Canadian. And for this particular model, the EQE 500, it starts at just under $105,000, so about $10,000 more. This has some options, including the big, um, there's some trims and M bucks package. The hyper screen alone is almost $10,000. So it's not 
hard to get the price point up on these when you start adding some SKUs to the options list. And this one comes in at just over $127,000 Canadian before freight PDI taxes and all that kind of good stuff. So it's a loaded vehicle. It's got everything that you need in this particular package, but it's not going to be cheap. So you have to weigh those those things if you're looking at uh, this kind of vehicle. You know, there are competitors in this marketplace. I mean, I wouldn't say the Model Y because it's a little bit smaller vehicle, but you know, it's, it's Tesla's really um, smaller SUV and then for anything bigger would be the Model X. And again, that starts at $115,000 Canadian for the Model X. So it's, it's right there in the price point, depending on what options you add to that. So, uh, but obviously you're gonna get more range uh, with the Model X on paper. And of course the, the supercharging infrastructure, you know, this has CCS, so this is still gonna take advantage of that. Um, there's no NACS on these as of yet. So for the price point, again, a luxury, quiet, comfortable machine, this is gonna give you all that. Now, as I mentioned, in my driving, the efficiency isn't the best, and especially with these colder temperatures, we're seeing the, uh, I'm seeing the efficiency in the 30 kilowatt hours per 100, 30 kilowatts per 100 kilometers, or kilowatt hours, the measurement, you guys, you guys, folks know what I'm doing. So it's certainly not the most efficient, um, you know, trying to keep warm, and we've had some cold temps, we've had some, a lot of snow, and, and even some rain this week, kind of borderline, almost freezing rain. So it's starting to get colder, and again, you're gonna hit those winter efficiencies. So I think on a full charge, safely get about 250 kilometers just a normal day-to-day -day driving. Um, and I had this parked outside, not plugged in every night, just letting it sit there. So there is gonna be a bit of a phantom drain on the battery trying to keep itself a little warm. So you're gonna put some of that. If you have the ability to plug it in every night, uh, I just didn't this week because I wanted to really stress the range on it. And then of course, you're gonna get all that back and, and not really have to worry about the range. Um, probably, you know, again, a good 250 to 275 kilometers in these cooler temps with just normal driving. Look, using the HVAC systems a lot because of the precips and the colds that we've had. So you need to understand that. But the, the ride, the quietness, the handling, uh, you know, that rear turning option that Mercedes has on their vehicles. This thing turns on a dime. It really is a quick, maneuverable, easy to maneuver in parking lots. It's deceivingly maneuverable. Uh, first time I started using that, I, it caught me off guard because I forgot about the rear steering. It's up to 10 degrees. So it, you know, if you have that option installed, it's maneuverable. So, you know, a really good vehicle for Mercedes. Do I recommend this? Absolutely, I do. I love the MB products. Um, them and BMW have really come out out of the gate with fine quality, higher end products that really do a good job in electrification and give consumers what they want, making it easy to make that leap into electrification. And I think they've done a great job here. All right, and that's it for this edition of the EV Revolution Show. Thanks very much for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed this quick look at this beautiful 2024 Mercedes-Benz EQE 500 4Matic SUV all that kind of stuff. Probably jumbled some stuff there. Great machine, again, thanks to MB Canada for letting me, uh, letting me have this for a few days. I'm starting to get numb because of the cold here, so I'm losing my ability to speak, but thanks very much for tuning in. Uh, all the closing information is coming up in the credits, so stay tuned for that. Always thank my Patreon supporters. If you're interested, you can check out the link. And again, everybody stay safe. Thank you very much for tuning in. Until the next show, everybody, again, take it easy, and I will see you when I see you. Take care and bye-bye.